Men today are weak. Here's the six reasons why. Pornography. I mean, anything can be porn. Substance abuse. The chronic use that can then reset really our dopamine threshold. Lack of physical strength. Video games. No good role models. And loneliness. Those are the six reasons why men today are not like they used to be. I know. And they this don't is, deadlift. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a, a, a hot one. You know, I was talking to uh, our uh, our editing team, and so people don't know we have an editing team that puts together our videos, and it's largely made up of uh, young men, young men in their late teens, early twenties. Um, great guys. Not because we're sexist, mostly because women don't really apply for that position. Yeah, so well, I mean that's true. That's yeah. actually quite true, but. They are um, great guys. Like we're really, really blessed. They're hardworking, very purpose uh, driven. That's why they they came to to apply uh, to work with us. And I sat down with them and hung out with them last week. And I said, you know, what are some things you would like to see us talk more about? I mean, you guys are all fans. You all listen to the show um, before you came to work here. You guys have been a part of uh, our growth uh, more recently. You edit our videos. Like, what would you like to talk about? And they're like, man. Like the, 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 the issues that are plaguing young men today are not talked about enough. Um, and they're talking about how, you know, it's like demonized to be a guy these days and everything's so toxic and, um, you know, how, how challenging things are. They were talking about things that they're aware of, like suicide rates and depression, anxiety, all true, all higher um, than they've been in the past. So I thought, you know what, let's do this. Let's talk about this. This is definitely something that needs to be talked about. And it's not talked about enough. And we do have a, a large audience and a decent percentage of them are young men. So do you I think, think that when, when you say weak, are you implying just physically or you no. mean like in general weak, yeah. like just uh, low morals, uh, low integrity, low strength, low, low drive? Yeah. Low. Like, is it like it all to get like everything? Yeah. So let's think of the opposite of, of what we're describing. Think of a um, quote unquote strong man. Uh, in, in all senses of the word, right? This is typically some, someone, and these are the, by the way, these are the kind of men that women tend to want to be with. These are the kind of men that women want to follow their children. These are the kind of men that other men want to follow. Okay. They're typically confident. Um, they are disciplined. Discipline is a big one, right? Because a, a, in every man can be undisciplined. Mm -hmm. um, we could easily be ruled by our desires and emotions and all that stuff, but discipline is really important. And men know this. We respect other men that have um, lots of discipline. Um, principled, you know, men with values. Why? Because they stand for something. You know, you, you want to, you, you respect people you know are going to be honest with you, tell you the truth, and have principle, not someone who just says one thing to you and then says something else, uh, you know, to someone else. So basically men that are solid and strong. The opposite of that is uh, a lot of what we're seeing. And, and the result of that is a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, a lot of loneliness. And the numbers, uh, the data on this is crazy uh, when you look at you know what's going on uh, with young men. They're having less relationships, they're dating less, they're, it's just really, it's really sad. So, um, and, and these are the main reasons that the data is showing. And um, you know that, like I said, I had that conversation with the fellas last week that we talked about. Today's program giveaway, the MAPS Super Bundle. That's a lot of free programs. Here's how you can win them. Leave a comment below this video, the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale right now. MAPS Anabolic Advanced, one of our newer programs, one of our most powerful muscle building programs is 50% off, okay? 50% off this month only. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Well, and the top of the list has to be pornography, and pornography's been around for a long time now. Forever. 
but the access to it has radically changed in just the last decade and a half. I mean, yeah. it was it's so different today than it was because like, it existed when we were kids. But the access for the average, uh, you know, adolescent, you know, oh, it's teenager. Insane. There's a lot more barriers around it beforehand. I mean, it was pretty difficult to see this type of imagery. And uh, I guess it was less social, socially accepted in terms of it being uh, something that was was sort of the norm. Um, and we've seen just like how this has affected a lot of young men and like too, the erectile dysfunction was another alarming uh, statistic that was going around. And um, this is just, I, I would never have seen this coming to be honest. That's part of the reason why it's so dangerous is because we've always thought of it as kind of, oh, it's kind of a bad habit, but it's somewhat innocuous. It's not like drugs. Right. And that's precisely because we've never had um, a time in history where we have this much access to this much novelty of imagery and videos and stuff like it's never been this way. Yeah. I mean, you could have you could have been a billionaire when we were growing up in the 90s and you would not have as much access as you have today. You could have bought all the videos, all the magazines and you still wouldn't have the same amount of novelty that you have access to right now on your phone. So, we view it like oh, it's like whatever because we've never had to deal with this before, but the data is coming back. And it's very clear. First off, uh, the way that it molds the brain is very similar to drugs. Your brain actually starts to downregulate receptors um, and change its shape and its function because of this extreme, you know, excitement through novelty. And pornography itself, uh, people who follow this have followed the how it's become more and more extreme over the years because people's uh, tolerance is going up. It's like when you first do, you first have a cup of coffee and espresso is so powerful. You drink it every day. Then you need two, three, four, whatever. It's got classic drug-like signs. You watch some, then you need more, then you need more. And then the brain shapes itself and molds itself. And there's even data that suggests that you, if you're watching a lot of porn, especially as a young man, when the brain is still shaping, you're teaching your brain to be aroused by watching mm -hmm. other men have sex with women. And not yourself. Well, I think too, it, I mean, it's really shaping the behavior around interactions with women in terms of like, okay, so you figure out what works, what doesn't work, opening lines, like communication, like skills, like being rejected. Like, so you go back and you self assess a lot and you have to grow. You have to get better. You have to improve. Uh, pornography is, is just one of those other things options that it it tends to kind of feed a certain impulsive need and now you're not motivated to grow and to work on a lot of these characteristics that uh, actually uh, the other sex is attracted to you uh, you're, did for. you did you know so um ancient teachings uh i mean spanning different uh cultures refer to sexual desire as also creative uh drive and historically Artists, um, athletes, athletes have done this for a long time, abstain from sex for 30 days before a sporting event or whatever. It's a driver for men. Now, yes, in the obvious sense, it drives you to go try to have sex or talk with people, but it also is just a driver in general. So in essence, it's like, uh, it's like we're neutering ourselves and turning young men into docile like just stay at home. Here's your processed food version of sex. Don't go out. Don't explore. Don't do those things. Is there? Here's the question. That's a ask. that's a cool way to put it, right there. The processed processed food of sex. You know, that's 100%. kind of and, and the same thing that we've seen in nutrition with with people, right? Like uh, I remember experiencing that with like fruit, natural fruit. Like not eating natural fruit for so long, eating so much sugar and candy. Fruit became almost tasteless to me. I had to abstain from candy for an extended period of time before I could reintroduce fruit and fruit taste mm. normal again. Well, well and look, good. Let me ask you, because so, we're all business owners. We've all owned multiple businesses. The skills in, that are required to, to go learn how to, it's, it's scary if you're a guy. It's very scary to go. We're the ones that typically have to approach the other person, the other sex. It's usually not women approaching men. It's usually men approaching women. And there's a process of learning that goes through it. You got to get over the fear. Then you're going to suck. Then you'll get better. You'll know how to communicate. You'll learn the other sex or whatever. That, those skills carry over to business. 
-hmm. carry over to just taking risks in general, just being brave in the world. In fact, the first scariest thing I ever did, I think, was approach a girl when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. You know, I didn't start a business when I was 12, but I, you know, walked up to the girl I thought was pretty. Um, and you're finding men are doing less and less and less of that. And part of it they now they're showing is that because they're quelling this driver by being at home, you know, watching pornography all the time. Well, Not to mention erectile dysfunction, all those other things. I was going to say, I was going to go that direction because obviously we've seen the rise in ED in young men. And I would also speculate that we've, that we've seen low testosterone. Do you think those are connected? Do you think that the pornography also plays a role in the, the decline in testosterone too? That's a good question because um, that's a very good question. I, I think if you connect it to the behaviors that it contributes to, probably. Like less likely to go out, less likely to take risks. Mm. Um, yes. Not the actual, you know, act of it itself, maybe. Yeah. But what it contributes to in terms of other um, types of uh, behaviors. This is a big issue that nobody's really sounding the alarm because we've always considered it is not that big of a deal, but we're seeing now an entire generation growing up on it mm -hmm. and there's a lot of problems. In fact, there's data that shows that if you've viewed pornography, I think it's before the age of 15, I want to say, or viewed it consistently, that your odds of having a normal sexual relationship as an adult drop by like a significant percentage, something like uh -huh. 80% or something like that. Yeah. Um, one out of four men hide it from their partners. One out of three women in long-term relationships say it's a problem in their relationship. So to say that this isn't an issue is stupid. Now, I know it affects some women as well, but it's mostly well, a and that, guy thing. And yeah. these are also people that are reporting all this stuff. I, I would make a case that there's a lot of people that uh, aren't even aware that it's it's causing issues in a relationship or aware that they're even addicted or have a problem yes. like anything else. Right. I mean, how often have you met some, how often do you meet someone addicted to anything that admits that they're addicted to you something? Know what the, you, know? you know what the test is for yeah. that? Mm -hmm. I'll do this to myself. If I'm using something too often, I'll say, can I go 30 days without this? And yeah. then wait for my visceral reaction. Yeah. So if you're listening to this right now and you're like, ah, porn, not a big deal. Okay. Go 30 days without looking at a sink, without using imagery at all yeah. in that way. And how does that make you feel? And, you know, how do you feel a week into it, two weeks into it? Can you make it 30 days? And I think a lot of guys uh, will have trouble. I think our I think our brains just haven't evolved fast enough to keep up with what happened in that leap, right? Like, I, I could literally count on one hand, under the age of 18, how many times I saw a Playboy magazine. Yeah. Yeah. On one hand, I can count. And you can count them because you remember. I do. <laughs> I, I'm not, I do. I remember each instance, yeah, right? Dude. I can think of three, actually. I can remember three very specific instances when a, a kid under the age of 18 got a hold of that magazine mm -hmm. and we snuck somewhere to look at it. And what's even crazier about that to me is that you can find more on Instagram yeah. or free on the internet. Yeah than what we were looking at on a magazine, which was one little blip in the entire year where that happened and the, this moment where it's it's just crazy to think that the young men today are and women are getting inundated with, with nudity and pornography at such a young age and so much of it so fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah not to mention uh, the pornography, legal pornography, whatever, its connection to sex trafficking um, and illegal activities. It's actually alarming the connection. It's, it's, you're supporting an industry that's not great. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, what was that, that show on Netflix? Oh, uh, uh, the Pornhub one? Yeah, where they're showing mm -hmm. like people who are trying to monitor that. Do you remember the first porn you ever saw? <laughs> this industry is going to get cleaned up. It was like, like they get way more views. They don't have enough people monitoring. And, not even close. And yeah. So yeah, they can't even keep up with that. So this is the point of the whole thing. It's not that it's like this um, nefarious type of like um, uh, energy there. It's just that they don't have the manpower to really like go through all yeah. of those videos. And, and I think the reason why you you hear us on a health and fitness podcast talking about this is it's now in, it's impeding our health. Totally. It's like, it, this was maybe a social issue, say 10 years ago when we we're talking about, oh, should you or should you not like do moral. that? Yeah, moral, social, 
kind of line, which isn't kind of really our our wheelhouse whatsoever. But it is now it is now bled into our space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is now affecting young men with erections, with their sex life, with, with just relationships. Yeah, with, exactly. And so now at this point, it's like okay, we got to wake up. We have to realize like it's unhealthy for us, we, regardless of where you stand morally on this like you need to recognize that it's unhealthy for yeah. us to continue down this and path. lastly just to add and by the way this 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 probably goes with a lot of what we're going to talk about today um self mastery is a very important thing that a man needs to to train um or to work on or to focus on or to concentrate on and women are attracted to men with self mastery and men want to follow men who have self mastery now why is this so important because Men are capable of terrible things, like the most violent crimes and most terrible things. There's a larger percentage of men that do those than women. We know this. Everybody knows this. When you look at the extremes, there's a a higher percentage of men on those. So a woman wants a man who is is capable of defending her, who's could be physical, but who's who's also got self mastery because I don't want him to beat my kids or hit me. I also want a man who's attractive and it's attractive to me that lots of women are attracted to him, but I want him to have self mastery because I don't want him to father other people's children. This is an innate thing. Mm -hmm. And this is something that men have, uh, through thousands for thousands of years have had to work on and focus on. So, Pornography is just one of them. It's like avoiding this, and it is training a part of self mastery. It's a discipline. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. and you and you have to work on it, just like anything else. And it's uh, it's a definite pull. I mean, this is a very strong one for young men. Absolutely. I mean, going through uh, puberty and just having all those like crazy uh, feelings that that lead you to all these decisions that um, you feel definitely like you're under the influence of something uh, because it's such a powerful uh, new uh, experience with this testosterone that you get it's it's a bit challenging to actually even have a conversation around because yeah i don't even know how i would have handled that uh if i was a teenage boy right now you like where i where i'd be at in my life like i know where i was imagine at. if you had access yeah it just it would be yeah insane. so there's there's, there's I, I come i try and come from a place of empathy right because i don't uh i don't know if i would have had the the level of self-awareness to self-mastery the discipline to refrain from that. I mean, I see as a, as a 40 year old man, how, how tempting it is to go down the rabbit hole of Instagram, you know what I'm saying? And like, uh, and, and I, and I can recall back to being a horny 16, 17 year old boy. And if I had access to that on my phone or on the internet all the time, boy, uh, it would take a well, lot of self-awareness and discipline to really harness that. Well, one of the points we're going to get to is going to be, is, uh, just a lack of good role models. And without going into that, because we'll cover other ones first and we'll get there, but I think if us as kids had really good role models that talked about its virtue and self-mastery, then maybe. Because I mm-hmm. worked hard and That's avoided- a good point. That's right? Because I worked point. hard and avoided partying because I, I idolized successful men in that sense. I didn't eat garbage and I worked out because I idolized men in that sense. But there's no like good good role models right now talking about you know that particular thing. That's we'll get fair. there. We'll That's get fair. there. Yeah. All right, so the next one is substance abuse. This is actually on the rise as well. And uh, really what substance abuse boils down to is you are either distracting or numbing or running from something, um, your willingness to not face um, some of your challenges or issues. And this is also on the rise with young men. Um, and this is, I mean, it, it could be weed. Uh, it could be s- certain supplements. And then, of course, the the illegal drugs that are out there. Um you know, can fall yeah, this one of all the ones we're talking about, I feel like this has been the most prevalent for the longest, right? I mean, or the most awareness, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. You, you know, like I, I do agree that it's on it's on the rise, right? When you think of things like uh, Adderall and stuff like that, so that young kids are getting medicated. That's with. That's what and, I want to talk about because I think there's certain substances we don't put in this category. Like right. if we say heroin, th- that's, cocaine, you can definitely still. That's why I wanted it. to bring yeah. that up, right? Because I feel like for, I mean back into the uh, opium days and like there's always been drugs hard drugs that people would utilize to escape and get away and and there's that category of people that most of us go oh i would never be like that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then there's this other category of things like uh caffeine like adderall like things that we've food that we've now agreed as like an accepted substance 
that we can start to abuse also because it's not heroin right. or opium or it's anything prescribed that's right, right. So, so there so there is this rise in these you know quote unquote accepted drugs that i feel like we're abusing uh, and that's why this is growing even more. I think there's we've always had a percentage of people that like yeah. you know drink their sorrows away, smoke their sorrows away. But then I think there's a, a, a growing population of people that are justifying their uh, well, it's like the accepted list of substances. Yeah, that we don't really look at. Um, I mean, full disclosure, this one for me is the hardest. Now I've never had uh, an issue where I've needed uh, felt like I needed to go to rehab or anything like that. But know thyself, right? I know myself, mm -hmm. and if I if I go off, or this is where I tend to have uh, the biggest challenges. Now, why? So I'll speak from a personal standpoint because I don't like to feel bad. I don't like to bad feelings, right? I like to distract myself. That that's that's a very alluring thing. Like you don't want to feel bad. Here, feel good. Take yeah. this. Oh, you this boring whatever that's going on, or this challenging you know, issue that's going on right Here's a great way to distract yourself. Um, and, uh, I think that's a lot of what's happening because, uh, young men aren't challenging themselves. They're bored or they're depressed or anxious because they're unhealthy. And a lot of these substances are prescribed. You talked about Adderall. That's a big one. Uh, all of the benzos like Xanax, that's now th those are being abused. Then you have over the counter supplements like Kratom. That's, that's one that I've had challenges with even because, it does affect the body like an opiate, um, and it's sold as like the safe alternative. In some cases, it is, but it's addictive, um, and it can cause withdrawal uh, type issues. Mm -hmm. Caffeine, like if you find that you can't get going if you don't have caffeine, like if you're not, if you're like, man, I, I just can't be, I'm not myself without it. Well, you might have an issue uh, with a substance, but this is, it's on the rise, and overdoses are on the rise uh, among men, and I think this is more of a symptom rather than cause uh of of you know of the weak thing i don't think this is this is making men weaker but this is more a symptom of the fact that they're already feeling weak they're well, already feeling you know un unintentionally i think there's going to be this underlying theme for all of it and i like how you placed it as self mastery cuz that's how i would i would position that too is that you know a lot of those things uh a lot of those things on that list i've indulged in myself but I've always had this thing where, and maybe that's because I grew up and I've seen a lot of drug abuse and I saw stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I never wanted to go down that rabbit hole. And then I got to an age where I felt like I'm old enough and mature enough that, oh, if I want to try this, I, I can try this and just and be mindful of what I'm doing. And so I've always had this kind of check in with myself, even if it's as simple as something like caffeine. It's just like if it's been a while when I haven't abstained for an extended period of time, mm -hmm. I always want to challenge myself with, okay, can I go 30 days? And it not be torture. And can I can I do that? And that, I think that check in on all of those substances is so important. That's exactly how I do it. Because uh, you and I are very similar in that sense. Um, and that's how I stop myself. Is I'll say, do I do I need this? Yeah. If I feel like I need this, then okay, I should probably stop. And then it becomes a challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, am I too weak to stop this? Am I not strong enough or brave enough or whatever enough to stop this? And then that becomes the the challenge for me. Can I, can I do this without that? Can I go through this feeling like tired, crappy because I'm not having my caffeine or whatever it is, right. or can I go to sleep without, you know, having weed or whatever, you know, can I do this? Am I strong enough? And then that positions that puts this in a position that I think is very beneficial for young men. Cause I think a lot of young men, this, this, this gets them motivated when it becomes a challenge when it's a uh, me versus that, who's going to win? I think that in, that makes a lot of young men feel excited. Like, you know what? I can meet that challenge versus the like, this is bad and you should it. Cause then it's like, well, I'll do what I want type of deal. Yeah. Cause I mean, there's a lot of things like for me, I can easily justify caffeine because my productivity, the way my mood, it, it changes for the better. Um, but you see patterns and you see these patterns where you, it becomes a conversation of, I need this and I have to have this. And this is the first, it's like an identity thing at that point. And I, to that point, it's, I'm, I'm worried about stuff like that where it, it will have a bit of a foothold. And if you're going to allow something to now, like you identify as that person, um, that's something that I need to address that and know that I can at any moment I can 
not have it. I can, I can operate just fine. I can go through, um, and, and work on myself and my health and my, maybe I'm not hydrating enough and maybe I can do other things and alternatives that, uh, will produce the same result, not better. Uh, I, I still have to explore that and I do like caffeine, so I'll probably come back to it. But I just have to intermittently go in and make sure that it's not, it doesn't have this hold on me. Yes, it's, not be ruled by it. It's yes. interesting that you guys are both, uh, you're highlighting something that, one, I, I, I kind of figured out on my own, just trial and error, and, and that it worked for me. And then I felt like that was confirmed when we had that great conversation with Adam Lane Smith. And he talked about how we're doing things wrong in therapy with, with yeah. men and the way men uh, handle or handle challenges is show me the problem. Tell me what it is. Give me a goal to overcome that. And, and, me, and give me yeah, a way to, and do, give it. Me a way to me do, do it. And give me a way to do it. Yeah. And then l- let me go do it. Right. And so I really feel like that's how I've looked at all those things. It's like, oh, wow. I didn't, I had a hard time getting rid of that caffeine or I had a hard time kicking that kratom. Oh, that here's my challenge. Challenge myself 30 days. Can mm-hmm. I do this? And I'll, I'll, even if I have to suffer for some of those days, like I will, because I have a goal in mind. Yes. Now right. I want to add this to that. Okay sometimes being strong means you know you need to go ask somebody for that kind of help. Hmm. So when it comes to substance abuse, if it, if it has such a grasp on you yeah. and you're strong enough to admit to yourself, like, I can't do this alone, because that takes a lot of strength too, then you reach out to somebody in a real way. Listen, I want to do this thing. I can't do it by myself. I need your help. That sometimes requires more strength than being like, oh, I can't do it, but I'm going to try to do it on my on my own anyway. That's essentially, that's a good point. You know, you, you got to be honest with yourself. That, that requires a lot of strength. Mm-hmm. But for most people who kind of teeter, which I think is a lot, a lot of men, I think a lot of men are not full blown, you know, crazy substance abuse. But if they're honest with themselves, they, they don't have a healthy relationship with certain things. You can do it by toughing it out, literally sit down and look in the mirror and say, uh, does this rule me or do I rule myself? And okay, this is going to be hard. So what? That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to do hard things and I want to master myself and that'll turn me into a better man. Oh, yep. um, all right. The next one, which we talk about all the time on the show, and we could spend a lot of time here, but I don't think it's necessarily necessary, but this, it's a lack of physical strength. This is an interesting one because I mean, God, there was a study that came out not that long ago. Men's men between the ages of 25 and 29 have lost roughly 26 to 30 pounds of grip strength. In, in, in a squeeze test. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay. In fact, a 19 year old today has the grip strength of a 60 year old in 1980. Okay. Just to give you an example of how physically weak we've become. Um, now lack of physical strength is not a great feeling or let's speak of the opposite. Let's, let's, let's reverse this. So people understand what this feels like. If you're listening to this or watching this right now as, and you're a young man, Imagine if somebody snapped their fingers and made you twice as strong instantly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you got up and you started moving things around and you started lifting things and you started just going about your day. How would that change how you felt? Right. Tremendous difference in how you feel. So lack of physical strength is not just about your physical body. It it literally makes the world harder for you and it makes you more vulnerable. Literally. Well, yeah. And, And when you're not strong enough, um, it, it tends to lead towards being fearful of more things. Of course. And so it, and this is, I've always, I, I don't like the the narrative about like strong, toxic, you know, toxic masculinity when in fact it's the weak men that are, are the most toxic. It's They're the ones that are fearful. They're the ones that are, are always looking at everybody as a threat. And so when you're in that state of fear and you're constantly feel threatened, your first button is violence mm. because you you feel like you're cornered. And to have that kind of self-confidence and that strength and know that you're going to be fine and you're going to be able to handle yourself and operate accordingly, you're going to be a lot more tempered in your approach. Dude, in, in uh, the in the defense of the you know the past few generations, not all of this I feel like is 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 their fault or our fault, right? Because we're part of that generation because it is now required that you go and you seek out these hard physical things 100%. to build that. Christian. That's there was 100%. A, there was a time just 50 years ago. You were default strong. Yeah. yeah. Because you were doing you know, it's funny hard, doing hard labor. Yeah. yeah, I was out. I was out, right? Country last week or like that. And just 
because you're doing that, you have to do physical things. I was moving big, heavy rocks sometimes. I'm carrying all this stuff down to the, the lake and hiking a mile to get in. And I'm just thinking to myself like, wow, this is such a rare occasion for me because we live in this such a comfortable climate controlled environment most of the time that just didn't exist for people just 50 years ago. And so I think a lot of that has to, I don't think that we're like, you know, they were like super, you know, gym goers and like lifting no, weights. More way people more. go to gyms today. Yeah. It's literally that just the everyday life has changed so radically that you now have to go seek those things. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, the body will adapt and you'll just get weaker the, because we're replacing all the hard things with easier yeah, shit. In the spirit of self-mastery, um, it's not your fault, but it is. It's not your fault that society changed and things no. got physically easier. That's true. That was progress. Um, in, in, in the sense of becoming more efficient, making things less, uh, injurious to your physical body, uh, less demanding on your physical body. But it's also your fault because if you're aware that you're physically weak, it is your job and your duty to go out and make sure that you're not by scheduling time or doing things that strengthen your body, strengthen your muscles. So it's, it's, yes, things have definitely changed. Mm -hmm which means you just now have a responsibility to add this to your list of things that you do, that you focus on, because otherwise you're not the same person. I can't stress this enough. I used to love training kids for this very reason. When I would train uh, like kid, like teenagers, okay? I used to love pointing this out. It was my favorite thing to do. They would do five push-ups this week. Next week they do seven. And I would always make this point. It was like such a powerful point. And I'd say, wow, you did seven push-ups. Last week you did five. And they'd be like, yeah, that's cool. I'd say, no, you don't understand. You're not the same person. You're literally not the same person. The you last week could only do five. Who you are today can do seven. Now that's both literally true in the sense that your body isn't the same, but it's also true uh, in terms of how you view the world and feel things and move around. Changing your body changes you or changing yourself requires you to change your body. So um, uh, physical strength is a big one. And, and you, the, the changes that lifting weights a couple days a week, literally like two days a week, the changes that makes in young men today, uh, is incredible. Just, just that alone makes a huge difference. Yeah. All right. Here's another one. This one, we're going to get the most negative feedback on my <laughs> Video games. Especially on YouTube. It's like they just jumped off. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Video games. Call of Duty. Yeah. There so we go. This is a, this one is uh it's it's become a distraction, a numbing agent, a it's become a replacement for going out and taking risks and talking to people. It's become a way to just kill the time. Um video games are fun, they're entertaining. But uh, it, it's guys that have issues with video games. It's not girls. Uh, so yeah, let's it, be honest about this. I'm gonna I'm gonna once again come to the defense of our our generation. Like just again, um, you know, the games have changed. Just like the the world has changed on the physical side, like the game has changed today than what it was just 30, 30 years ago. Like uh, I don't know if I I think I told you guys. I told you guys. I don't know if I brought on air or not that I bought the original yeah. NES for Max. Yeah. And uh, we took it up to Truckee, so we'd have it up there. And uh, I don't know, once every other day, uh, I let him play for about a half hour or so. So easy to not let him play, to pull him off of it and stuff like that, because yeah. the games just, we weren't there yet. Like, yeah. it was such a big deal that we could create these animated characters that you could play with these these two buttons yeah. at that point. It, where where the science was, we hadn't evolved it into getting into the brain of the gamer, right? Like yeah. the science in gaming now is like processed food. Is the, the the science and processed foods have become like it wasn't like that. What like back then it was like, can you make this thing work? Oh, not only can we make it work now, now it's like, how is the gamer's brain working, and how do we keep them in this loop yeah. and not make them want? How do we stop? fully immerse them in, in yeah. all of their attention, all of their senses, like every bring all their friends in there, everything all. In one place it's so wild to have a, a young child right a four-year-old who has got this just you know uh almost like a like a, a clean slate right like in not he's not biased in any way hasn't been indoctrinated by anything and, and to be able to compare and contrast this for me is so wild to see uh so his very first game that i ever introduced him to was angry birds app on the iphone and I told you guys, this is what led to me pulling 
the yeah. iPad and, yeah. and removing it because it was like he got up and he was thinking about it mm -hmm. and he wanted to play it and he kept asking about it and I realized like oh shit like <laughs> this quickly became a problem and I yeah. just literally introduced this to this kid. The Nintendo is not like that. No. Like the, he he wait, wait he. I like have to Roblox. tell him like hey do you want to go play Mario? Yeah. Oh, okay, Dad. Like where the Angry Birds game, he he'll sit in front of that for as long as I will let him sit in front of that. It is the craziest thing ever, and it's because they have been engineered now to suck you into these games and young men that grew up in the 80s and 90s and above man they really if you got introduced to it at a young age you don't even realize you got sucked into that thing yeah man. so here's here's the crazy thing about video games because uh men are more, much more likely many many times more likely to become addicted or, or create problems they're the largest purchasers and users and consumers of video games so you got to ask yourself why why men and why not women? Now, there are women that have issues with these as well, but it's like way, I mean, it's disproportionate, okay, to men. Why is that? <sighs> because men are driven to pursue a goal yep. and to accomplish a task, okay? It's all there. So when you're playing a video game, what you're doing is you're satisfying this need Except you're actually not doing anything. Yeah, right? you're you're the, simulating the what, leads nowhere. You're simulating something you're supposed to do in real life. In real yes. life, one of the things that I think has made me the most success in my life was cutting off that. Yep. I remember, and I've told the story before yep. on the podcast. Same. My buddy, who was about five, six years older than me, who was teasing me when I was still in my late twenties, still fucking around with video games, going, and he kept looking at me like. When do you drop this? And in my head, I'm like, I have my house. I make six figures and I play video games. Like I got it all figured out. And he's like, bro, you understand how much that's keeping you, holding you back from reaching your real goals that you say you have in life. And it took me a long time for that to really make that connection. And it's silly because when I think about the math on the amount of hours per week that I was putting into playing conquering levels yeah. and beating people online. If I just replace that with books, just that, that that's it. Just trade the hour of video games a night for an hour of reading something that is going to teach me a skill or make me better at my craft. Holy shit. Did that accelerate my financial growth? That, and that's all I needed for that switch to go off for me. Then I went, oh, okay, light so, bulb moment. So that's what I like to communicate to. First two things. One, this is an innate drive and desire that men have. Men are the builders. We're the, we're the pursuers. We, we've, you give us a goal, like you said, you give us a way and you give us some purpose and we'll drag ourselves over broken glass. What video games do is they quell that, except you do nothing. You're playing a game. Yeah. They quell that. So your potential becomes much lower as a result. It's much lower um, as a result because you're playing the game and you're quelling this driver. Imagine if you took that away, what this driver may propel you to do or what it may propel you uh, to become. So, and I know the arguments like, well, it teaches me hand-eye coordination skills, blah, blah, blah. Stupid, stupid, <laughs> Stop dumb. It. You know you can you learn that. You get good that. at video games. That's yeah. it. You, get, you, know? you can learn that other ways in much more productive and more successful ways. That's just an excuse. A lot of those articles are written because this is also a massive industry now. And they are, mm -hmm. have their own people out there trying to make it look like it's like, there's, by the way, there's nothing wrong with having fun. You're hanging out with your friends. We're not talking about yeah. like the occasional, but there's a lot of guys that spend hours a week uh, playing video games, doing stuff, building stuff or pursuing, you know, goals on a game and not doing those things, um, in real life. Listen, so. I, I feel like the, uh, at least for me, that was such a light bulb moment. Like if, if everybody has their range of what, what's, uh, justifiable, like as far as the amount of time, I just said that I, I play video games with my son, right? Half hour every yeah. other day or so we played whatever. Okay. So if you can be honest with yourself and say, whatever, a lot of time, that you supposedly justify in your week, if you were to replace that with reading something or a acquiring a skill, yeah. ask yourself, how long would it take you to become fucking great <laughs> at yeah. something else or great at what you currently do if you were to just dedicate yourself to replace that time with that or, craft? Like, Yeah, I know that we didn't add this one on the list, but it kind of goes in conjunction with this is just like mindlessly scrolling. Sure. Yeah, uh, because I just see that. It is the same thing, really. Yeah, is. it's the same need in terms of like just being able to kind of go through and 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 get hit, get these sort of hits of dopamine and, and be able to see like um, everything going on and it's giving you that kind of same stimulation. But yeah, it's not providing any substance. No, and I'll tell I'll say this. Here's what's interesting with some of these, like video games, for example. When you start to master this, you actually stop wanting it. 
Yeah. Like you love video games. Yeah, I love video now, games. Now, let me ask you, how often do you play video games? Rarely ever. Yeah. Rarely ever. You stop. Why? Because th that drive, you start to apply to other things and they actually become, they feel more satisfactory. Way more satisfaction. Way more satisfaction. It's not the, like I said, the processed food. I mean, that was the come to Jesus <laughs> moment my buddy had for me. He knew, like, we, we went way back. And so he knew how ambitious I was as far as financial success. And, you know, and he was looking at me like, dude, as, as ambitious as you say you are and the things that you're trying to accomplish, you really think that this is getting you closer to that. Like, and if you didn't, if you just replace that with reading books, like yeah. where, and it was just like, it really was like this. And then when you, then when I was like, okay, like anything else I like to do, like, okay, well, maybe there's a little truth in what he has to say. Let me go apply that for a period of time and see if I see a return. And of course, you know, it didn't take long of knocking out a few books in the replace of that time I played video yeah. games to realize how much knowledge I was starting to gain. Yeah. And then it was like, oh my God, this was the hack for life. Get rid of video games, awesome. add in books, and all of a sudden I'm going to be way better. Totally. All right. The next one is that we have a lack of good role models. Now there's good role models that are out there, but they're not the ones getting all the attention. Um, so the message here is to find a good role model. Uh, male, a good male role model and, and look at how they're living and what they're doing. And men do very well with this. Men do very well with having a mentor, following, seeing what they do. Now, the problem is, is that the, the role models that are out there for men are terrible. They tell you either you got to be a version of masculinity that drives fast cars, sleeps with everybody, parties all the time, like this weird billionaire character that, and, he, and also, but he's also super happy and satisfied with life or whatever that version, or you get this other version where it's like this emasculated, weak, docile, uh, subservient, you know, kind of whatever type of dude. When in reality, the best role models show you that they're good fathers, they're good providers, they're good partners, they're disciplined, they're consistent, they're honest. Mm. And it's like- They have integrity. Integrity, like, like media does not highlight that at all. Yeah. Um, you don't see any of that. All the mod all the models we get in media are terrible. They teach men to be either violent assholes or mm. docile sheep. It's very interesting. Yeah, I I feel like social media has done a good job of highlighting the like superficial things that we we desire, especially as a, a young boy. I mean, I think that was the appeal to that that character, right? The guy who had the fast car, the guy who has got you know, the Dan Bilzerians, this, these characters that have these material things that we think that we want so badly in our life. And they're not necessarily good role models, but you, you, and you don't maybe even realize that you're admiring them like that, or you're following them like that, but you're consuming their content or their stuff. And that's what you're, what you're learning. You're learning those behaviors and what you're not seeing is the, uh, the other side of that yeah. or the dark side of that or the empty side of that, right? How many times have you guys met somebody who has this, uh, portrays this life of, oh my God, it's so amazing. And then we hear they're on drugs or yep. they commit suicide or it's like, wait a second, he had all this money and all these women and he had all this stuff. And it's like, how could he commit suicide? By, by the way, I want to address real quick why uh, young men can easily get, look at that and think that that's awesome. There's two reasons Two. let's talk about the money and the women. The reason why the money looks so awesome is because it's evidence of potential value, hard work, consistency, and discipline. doesn't guarantee it, and so we worship the money, but the reality is the reason why it looks amazing to us is because it's like, oh, that's a guy that has a lot of value. That's a guy that provides uh, something that a lot of people want, and that's connected to the second one, which is he's got all these women. Why is it that men who could potentially have lots of women, so I'll say it like that, why is that such a, why do so many guys think that's a cool thing? Because that's not a small feat. Like women are very <laughs> good judges of character. Okay. You look at all the dating apps, look at all the guys that get the attention. It's like very small percentage. So if you're a guy that gets a lot of women's attention, that's not that you're probably doing a lot of things, right? Like I said, women are very good judges of character. So we look at those men and be like that guy, he's doing awesome. Now the difference is a lot of women want the guy versus the guy who sleeps with a lot of women. Very different. That's what we tend to idolize in mm -hmm. media is the guy that does sleep with all the women and has no relationships, no real ones. When in reality, what's really cool is, the, oh, a lot of women like that guy. Yeah. You know, that's different. I'd argue that uh, you have way better chances of finding that guy with good character that's nowhere on the media. Yeah. Probably right. Nowhere. Yeah. Uh, the one that's just consistently 
puts the hard work in is you know good to, good to his wife is is a good father uh just continuously does the right thing is in help helpful and considerate and strong and puts in the work and it's like it, it's so unfortunate that we're looking to these screens and we're looking to all this shit out there to find that. And it's probably right next door to you. Yeah. No. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. That's, I think that probably, uh, and back to the self mastery theme, if, uh, if you're a good man, a good father, and, and you realize the pitfalls of technology, phones, social media platforms, you probably abstain from it a lot, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I was this last week when we were up in truck. One of my favorite things about going up there for my week vacation is it's so easy for me to abstain from that. So it's like it's so easy to just put the phone in the in the living room or in the bedroom and then just go about my day all day long and be with my family, be present with my friends. And so, yeah, I would imagine that uh, most really good men probably aren't spending a lot of their time making Instagram They're posts. Busy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and you know, here's the other one, uh, Justin. You, I mean, you said it. I think that these role models exist in your life, or you can find them in the real world and not uh, through media. I was lucky that my father mm -hmm. uh, was my first great role model, but then I found other role models in real life. These were men that I worked for. Yeah, uh, these were mentors. <laughs> And many times they didn't know. This is the other thing. It's not like you go up to a guy and you're like, hey, you know what? You're going to be my mentor. Is that cool? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't even tell them half the time. I just watch them, yeah. see what they do, and they just kind of become a mentor of mine. And I had several of those, you know, coming up through the gym industry. People that I worked for that I admired for different reasons mm -hmm. that I learned from. And I think this is an important thing. If you're a young man, find those people that are – And that, by the way, you're not going to find someone that's perfect. That's just not how it works. Don't do that because that's like – that's like self-defeating, okay? Like, oh, well, he's also not good at this, so I'm not – that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. But let's say somebody is successful entrepreneur or somebody's a great – or consistent with their workouts or something like that, something that you need help in or you want to get better at. Watch what they do and allow them to become your mentor. Watch what they do. And I, again, and I think that's why this is so difficult to, to point to an example. And there's not a whole lot of them I could tell you guys like, oh, I know for sure this is a good, you know, moral – person to follow and yeah. to, to uh, listen, because most of the time people, when they're on the stage are trying to portray themselves a certain way and they're trying to um, drum up this, this example that they think everybody wants to hear. And then they portray themselves in that direction. Meanwhile, like their life is in shambles right behind them. You'd never even know this. Yeah. Right. And so there's so many examples of that. And you just got to embed yourself more in the community. You got to, you have to put work in, you got to, you got to get out there and, and connect connect with people. Uh, and that's hard. That's another hard thing to do, especially in today's age is to actually physically, you know, be somewhere. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is to volunteer somewhere and be a part of something. Well, an another great strategy along those lines is actually continuing to pursue personal growth and, and be better yourself mm -hmm. because that uh, uh, someone like that attracts other people. Like yep. you, if you put the work into, you start becoming aware of people around you like that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You, if you, if you become the, this, this man, if you become the person who is, is growing, is learning, is reading, is, is improving their skills or craft is refraining from, from temptation all the time, from being a better person, having more integrity, uh, it's, you'll, you'll find more and more people because you'll attract more and more people awesome. that are like that. Now, the last one actually ties into kind of what you guys are talking about, which is loneliness. There's mm -hmm. an epidemic of loneliness for all people, but especially for men, and it gets worse as we get older. It's actually bad right now for young men. It's worse for men our age because men, we just, we don't tend to not want to go out and just meet and hang out with people. If there's nothing to do and there's no one out there, then we'll just kind of, we can become hermits and, yeah. and be okay with that when it's really not okay. There's this kind of epidemic of loneliness and modern technology has only enabled this or made it much easier. Now, a lot of people are like, well, I talk with my friends when we play video games together or, mm -hmm. you know, we get on social media. Yeah. Like, look, the data is clear on this as well, but I don't think I even need to cite the data because, come on, let's use common sense. Real relationships are with in person. That's how you build re real relationships. And real relationships require work and consistent work. So it's like, um, you know, I want to have my family over. We're all going to have dinner together. Like, oh my God, so much work so much mess. Let's just forget about it. Like it takes work. It takes work to have them come over. It takes work for us to hang out together. It takes work for me to clean up afterwards. But the, the dividends you get in, in terms of your mental health, physical health, physical health, 
men who are lonely are far more likely to die of chronic disease than men who are not lonely. Uh, they're several times more likely to have depression, anxiety, commit suicide. Like this is a huge one. In fact, this one contributes to the rest. The more lonely you are, the more likely you are to have challenges with all the other things yeah, that we talked about. Things. What do you think is the major contributor to loneliness? Like, what do you think that it's it's tech and social media? Do you think it's how divisive the, the society has become? Do you what do you think is like the main contributor? I would that? say we have uh, more uh, effective distractions mm -hmm. and uh, and then just technology in general. So when we were kids, uh, you know you were bored if you were at home yeah, so before you, I got cable. You I had remember, to go to your friend's house. I yeah. remember when my parents got cable because when they got cable, I went out less because all of a sudden I had 50 channels instead of just the two that came in with the antenna. Yeah. But when we had the, the shitty TV with the three channels or two, first of all, I had to wait for a show to come on that I liked. It was like, I could go search, like watch what I want. It had to be broadcast and nothing was on at the times I wanted to, you know, what, so I was like, what do I do? I'm just gonna stay here by myself or go outside. Mm -hmm. And I had to go out and meet yeah. people. You, you know what really struck me was that that great, great talk that we heard um, Jordan Peterson do. And he talked about ages uh, basically three to five, right? Or the the three to four range, right? Yeah, yeah four years old. I think yeah, so yeah, it was right off, in yeah. that range, right? Yeah, four, the cutoff was four, right? Or two to four is what he said. Yeah, so two, two to four, four uh, age range. And I think why it's, it's blowing up like this is because he talked about the importance of their, them playing and and playing with other kids is really what they're doing. We look at it as play, but really what they're doing is acting out uh, real life, yeah. what they're going to be and how they're going to be introduced into society. Mm -hmm. And this generation, the last generation and a half, was the iPhone generation. And many parents used that as a babysitter and I don't think realized how much that made them enable to use these skills that we're talking about to go over to a friend's house and say, I want to go play. I want to play and knock on their door and, and, and be afraid to be rejected or them not be home. Or what if they're not home and I can go play by myself? And like, yeah, you, that's all things that m most kids before the eighties all had to figure out. You had to figure that out. And it made us better actors in society. And now you have a generation of kids that have grown up that got got to skip that. Yeah. And if you miss that cutoff, you you know, you get ostracized. Yeah. It's it's really hard to integrate at that point because the other kids who've had those interactions learn play. They learn those boundaries. They learn like um, you know, what they can say, how physical they can be, and like uh how to interact appropriately when you don't receive that feedback and information now you're trying to jump into that group of kids like it's just Dude, it, it's a disaster i so i've seen now enough uh gatherings with teenagers right i have two teenagers and something remarkable happens sometimes these are all kids friends right they're all meeting up together and at some point everybody will get on their phone and nobody's talking to each other mm -hmm. this is not uncommon in the same room yeah yeah uh, we had my niece and nephew visit. We we took everybody's phones away. And and then they all started to interact. Now, people are like, well, what's the big deal? Well, the reason why they're not interacting and they're on their phones isn't necessarily because the phones are more entertaining or fulfilling. That's not the case. It's because interaction with others requires you get over some fear. Mm -hmm. You got to stop being shy. You got to kind of build some skills. So it's, it's just, and that's for a teenager that's hard and challenging anyway. Now, as you get older, it gets even more challenging because you're not in school. So how am I going to meet other people? So someone watching, especially a young man, might be like, well, okay, what do I do? Go outside and just talk to random dudes? No, that's not going to work. <laughs> that's unless hey, guy. Yeah, yeah, unless you're trying to make a different kind of friend. That's not going to yeah. work. Uh, but uh, probably the best thing to do, and this is just what men have always done, it's been successful, is you, you sign up for men's groups. Now, what does that mean? Typically, it means you sign up for some kind of a sport or something you do together, poker, basketball, mm -hmm. uh, you know, baseball, softball, or there's also men's groups now at churches, community centers, like where men just get together and talk about, they like cars, we'll talk about muscle cars, or, you know, we all like working out, we're all going to be at the gym, whatever. Men's groups are the best ways to do it. It's scheduled, it's disciplined. And I know myself that if I, if I didn't do this for a living, so I, we get to all hang out every single day, if I didn't do this, I would have to join some kind of a group because I mm -hmm. wouldn't go out and just go do it on my own. It would have to be something structured. I would have to sign up for some kind of a, a you know, men's 
something. Maybe not a sport, but <laughs> something, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. So look, uh, that's what this episode was all about. And I do want to be very clear. Uh, we're not all speaking from ivory towers. This is, These are all things we've all had or continue to have challenges with um, ourselves even now. Uh, but this is a pursuit of growth and discipline. So we hope this episode helped you out. Look, if you like this show, check out mindpumpfree.com and look at all of our free guides. We have free guides that can help you with many, many health and fitness goals. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. 